Welcome to the first lesson of JavaScript testing for beginners. Today, we're going to talk about understanding testing. When I asked what people's biggest struggle was when it came to learning about JavaScript testing, most people said understanding the different types of testing and what they all mean and the sort of tools needed to set up their testing environments to test their JavaScript code. So we're going to talk about those today. So first off, what is a test? Well, a test is really simple. You set up some conditions for, you, for how your test is going to work. You then give some specified inputs to your code. You call that code and then we're going to check, we're going to verify that the expectations of the output, the thing that's returned from your code, is what you want it to be. So there are lots of different types of tests and you probably heard the different names, unit tests, integration tests, functional tests. So we'll talk a little bit about them. So firstly, we have unit tests. This is when you split up your code into the smallest unit that it makes sense to test. In JavaScript, this is normally a function. What you want to do is you want to test this really small piece of code and you want to isolate it from any dependent code. We can do this using stubs or mocks, which I'll talk about a little bit later. These allow us to fake external dependencies. Now, unit tests should be very, very fast, so you'll end up writing a lot of unit tests for your code. Next up, we have integration tests. Now, integration tests are a bit bigger than your unit tests. They test multiple code modules and they test the full application flow. They may use some external dependencies, so they might rely on your database or some external API requests, something like that, but you can also mock those. And generally, they're slower than the unit tests because they're testing a lot more code. So you'll write less of these than you will unit tests. Finally, we've got functional tests, or sometimes known as end-to-end -end tests. These are tests which test the whole application. And normally, you'd use a browser for this with some automated browser testing. You'll obviously have a lot more configuration to set these up, and hence, they're a lot slower than your integration tests or your unit tests. So again, you'll probably have a lot less of these. You have to be quite careful because you're going to be testing things that are on the screen or interactions through the website, things that are being clicked. And sometimes that can mean they're more brittle when you're relying on user interface data. So as your code interacts with other modules in some way, sometimes you want to isolate it for your unit test and we use what's called a test double. Now this is a generic term for when you replace a, a production object with something for testing purposes. If you think of it like a stunt double replacing an actor for, a, for the dangerous scenes in a film. So we have lots of different types of test doubles. Firstly, we've got a dummy. Now a dummy object can be used in place of your production object and it'll match the interface of the thing it replaces. However, you don't really care what it does. It's just going to be a simple placeholder that's going to replace one of something like one of your function parameters. We then have what's called a stub. Now a stub is an object or function and you pre-program the response. So you tell it what to respond to given some arguments. And generally it doesn't respond to anything else. So you tell it specifically in your test what you want it to respond with. And this helps you to test your happy paths or unhappy paths by returning different data from, from the stubbed functions. Next up, we've got a spy. Now a spy again wraps an object or a function, but it also records how the object is used. So you can tell how many, how many times the thing's called. For instance, if you're going to send emails, you could see how many times an API is called to send the emails. The thing is, it often doesn't alter the behavior. Um, you're just sort of finding out how the object or function was used. Then we've got a mock. So mocks also fake objects, and they're a bit like spies or stubs. But the difference is you pre-program in the expectations of what you expect to happen with that function or object. You then assert that the mock is used as you expect it to be. That means it calls all the functions that you've set up with the values you expect. And finally, we've got a fake. Now, a fake object is very similar to a stub, um, but it may implement some functionality. So it's something like using an in-memory data store instead of a production database. It just fakes that object. So in terms of testing JavaScript, this is the environment I use. We're going to set up Node.js uh, and NPM to install some packages that we need. I personally use ES6 rather than ES5. Then we've got some frameworks that I use. So Mock is a testing framework that I prefer just because I'm very, very familiar with it. Um, it supports asynchronous testing very well, and you can use syntax in both the test-driven development and behavior-driven development styles. Now, Mocha doesn't come with an assertion library. You can use Node's assertion library, but I use Chai. 
and it has better readable expectations, as you'll see in our next video. And lastly, there's Synon. Synon creates our test doubles. So those are things like spies, stubs, or mocks. And it's also got a great fake timer library so we can alter our times so we don't have to wait for things. And that's the end of today's lesson. I'll be back tomorrow with another video on JavaScript testing for beginners.